stiff arm to crack out of <laughs> Draco match right there. Fighting through contact, fighting through off the line, being a double team, multiple moves stacked into one. Just a play of pure domination. This is actual film, this is actual football talk. It's a football show, we're talking football, not storylines. And you are listening to another edition, the 29th edition of Blue It Splits. Like I said, these shows are going to be firing out. Um, today, we have 49 plays of Greg Van Roten. Um, the next show, which I will be recording right after this, uh, which will be releasing probably a day or two after this one does, um, will be Patrick Anuwasar. I think that's how you say his name. Peanut, which I'll be referring to him as Threat the Review. Um, and then we're going to have Cager uh on a couple days after that so and then other than the cager review like i said the only things i really have to do is is wilson gore which should be both relatively short reviews like an hour <clears throat> um and then i'll be doing that live call-in show like i said just uh if, if you are interested in partaking in that uh like i said uh, obviously just keep keep an eye out or just keep listening to the show and then i'll message out some details even if you're just gonna be on youtube live it's gonna be like eight o'clock on a thursday or whatever it might be, um, you can comment. So even if you have, a, if you are one of the YouTube people who who uh, comment and uh, listen or, or watch on YouTube, you don't have to obviously call in, but you could you could join the live stream and then comment underneath the stream. And I could see what you're saying, and I could, uh, you know, kind of go back and forth with some people. So I think that would be pretty fun because I don't really have a lot of interactions with with listeners like I used to. So I would enjoy that. Um, the housekeeping, GRB31. Uh, on Twitter, posting Van Roten right now on Twitter. Um, so I have to get a little bit ahead on Twitter. It's all it's all pre-done, but I just haven't been able to tweet it out. I've been a little bit busy. Um, got a five-star review or got a five-star rating, which I appreciate. Like I said, somebody just popped in there probably from YouTube, hit five stars. So I really appreciate that. Like I said, once we get to 75, um, I'm going to pick a random name with a list randomizer. And then I'll message that person or tell them to message me. And then I'll... Uh, you know, obviously shoot them over a free shirt and a, a year uh, subscription to, to JetX. So um, I would appreciate the reviews. Other than that, uh, I don't think there's anything. JetX shop, uh, different shirt today. Uh, Slim Mim, Denzel Mims, and it says on the bottom, Band in Philly. Um, the only reason I, I – and I like the shirt for a couple of reasons. One, the Band in Philly thing I think is pretty funny, and I was a big Slim Jim guy um, as a kid. So it kind of obviously uh, – uh looks like that brand i'm not gonna say it's exactly the same because that's uh something that we don't want to dabble into um but that's about it now let's get into the strengths and weaknesses of greg van roten just like uh fant which getting pretty good response I, I know a lot of people want to see him it's crazy how many people wanted to see fant over mcdougald um but like i said if, if you are newer to the show um, I have, uh, I have literally everybody. I have obviously Beckton and Ashton Davis and Mims and, uh, James Morgan cage or cager will be coming. Um, Huff, I have McGovern, um, Pierre Desir, you know, whoever, uh, Bryce Hall, uh, Perryman, like everybody who's come to the Jets who's new this year, I've pretty much done. Um, there will obviously be a guy or two I miss, like I'm not, or miss. I'm not doing like Josh, Josh Andrews or, you know, some like backup, uh, whoever, you know. So even though I am doing a couple of backups who most likely will be backups, like fourth, fifth string guys and, and Quincy Wilson, uh, we'll see how his film looks. That's going to be an interesting one. That's going to be the next one after Cager. And then Gore, who um, is one of those guys who I think is overall underrated by fans because they look at the, they look at the, um, yards for carry last year in Buffalo. And then I, I watched some Buffalo games and I messaged a Buffalo guys, a Buffalo Bills guy I know and who is a film guy. He's not just a casual fan. And he was telling me that Gore was running really early well in the season, which he was, if you look at his stats. And then Singletary started to take over because he's the young guy, the young guy obviously will. And then it became Frank Gore coming in when they were running the clock out where the team knew they were, they were running the ball because they were trying to kill clock. So they would sack the box or it was in short yardage, just uh, situations, goal line type stuff. So yeah, obviously if he's running versus eight, nine guys in the box, you know, when they're trying to stop the run, it's going to be a little bit harder to get a high yard for carry. So I think they're going to be a little bit surprised with that one. I haven't watched him yet, but I'm, I think I'm going to be surprised as well um, with how much juice he has in the tank. Now with saying that I still want him to be, uh, you know, the, the third string guy, because let's be realistic. The jets aren't really going anywhere this year. 
Um, at most, at the maximum, I see nine wins. Uh, if I had to bet, it's six or seven. You know, uh, it's not that I'm down on the Jets. I think they're building the right way. I think Joe Douglas is building the right way. But um, they're playing. You know, sch- the schedule is the schedule. Like, yeah, like I understand there might be a game or two where a guy is injured. You know, last year to Steelers would been a harder game if Big Ben's there, or you know, this game might have been harder than it than it was because of whatever reason. But for the most part, having the third diff- most difficult schedule, uh, all those teams are going to start losing good players. Even though this year might be the year where a guy or two gets gets uh, sick or um, gets a scare or something like that. Obviously, we hope nobody gets sick or anything like that. Um, but you know, the Jets. I, I, that's that's my prediction um, of what they'll finish. I, I think I think they're around a seven winning team. Um, could they go a little bit higher? Could they go a little bit lower? A little bit lower? Yes. There, there's of course the NFL guys out there who are saying the Jets are going to be three and thirteen and two and fourteen and four and twelve. I don't think they're that team. Um, I really don't, especially with the upgrade on the offensive line that they've gotten, um, which isn't. They're not. They're not studs. Or I, I don't think they're going to be average yet. I think average would be awesome. I, I think they're going to be below average, but um, that's a lot better than last year. Last year they're horrific. This year they're going to be below average. Next year, you hope they're they're slightly above average, and then in year three, four of Douglas, you hope they're an elite offensive line. I think they could be an elite offensive line in two, three years. Let's say you know Clark works out, uh, McGovern stays where he's at, uh, Beckton works out, and then two years, you can't realistically replace your right guard, right tackle. Which you know, and I'm not even saying that they both need to be replaced. I think right guard is definitely going to be a position they replace. Um, in the future, it depends on where Clark goes. If he goes left guard, I think we're going to need a new right guard because uh, Van Roten is a little bit older, uh, 30, 31 years old. So he's not going to be the long, long-term long piece. Um, if he takes steps in the right direction, maybe he could be like the worst guy on the line type deal. But I think they will look to replace him because D- Douglas does really love the offensive linemen. And like I said with Fant, if you watched last episode, um, I think he has room to be that 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 decent starter, which you can get away with a decent starter at one position or two positions on the offensive line. Still be a really good offensive line individually. A guy could be decent, but if the other guys are good around him, they could all together be a good offensive line. So it depends on the cohesion and how well they work together and stuff like that. Um, so that that do, definitely does matter. But looking at Greg Van Roten, 6'3", 303 pounds, thirty. I have thirty years old. I don't know if he's still thirty. Maybe it's thirty one now. Um, I watched what I don't know how I this is okay I label this weird I don't know how, what games I watch I watch a bunch of games I I was doing some type of crazy notes when I was watching him that I do it, I screwed up something um but his strengths and weaknesses uh strengths so wide frame power and anchor power and punch plays with hand, hands on guard plays long plays low while not engaged aggressive mindset short area quickness uh, maintains balance even when being off balance which is a good thing for sure um obviously you don't want him off balance but he if he can maintain his balance while being off balance it makes no sense technically but it does um and i've explained it before effort motor strong grip looks to plow guys over uh, strong grip strong lower body good puller stays tight to the line of scrimmage and takes on correct shoulders of defenders rips traps if if uh, he feels that d the d alignment is leaning will chop arms attacks uh, ribs and hips which is good uh, obviously, like we, we've talked about it you know, in the last show, and you'll see more in this show, ability to run D linemen past QB's level in, in recovery mode, um, awareness on pulls, decent patience and run game, allowing defenders to define themselves. The weaknesses I listed uh, can reach lunge for blocks, top heavy at times, feet a little clunky, uh, loads into punch, hands can land high, little tight, over commits to blocks at times, uh, spotty and stunt twist game. Some wasted steps, lower and upper body disconnection. Um, can overset, needs more consistency in drag hand, too often just a formality. Uh, I think I'll show that as well. Can see ducking and run games. Space, depth, and pass sets is inconsistent. Uh, needs more consistent hand placement. Feet can stall. Need to work to cover gaps. Um, needs to work to cover gaps. Uh, early to chase outside rusher versus staying inside. Pushes with inside hand in situations where he shouldn't. Or I should, I should say punches, not pushes. Uh, lateral athleticism needs better control overall. All right, so that's everything I listed for him. We're gonna get hot and heavy into the film. Sorry for the yawns. I don't know why I'm yawning. I'm uh, I am not tired like last show. I got I got some sleep, which is a positive. So, uh, do, do packs a punch and. I got the I got the one comment. I don't know what it meant uh, on the YouTube. Um, guy guy commented something negative. Um, 
for the people who comment negative stuff, if you disagree with me, you're, you're fine to voice your opinions. We'll have a discussion. But for the people who are like, oh, you suck. It's like, all right. So I'm, I'm assuming that you have a lot of meaningful things going on in your life. And you're a very happy person to do that. Just, just don't watch. I, I couldn't care less if I lose one, two, three, four, five, six, ten, a hundred guys who watch. Um, if you're here to be pricks, I, I couldn't care any less. I really couldn't. It's you're, you're not, I'm not, I'm not getting money from you and I, I don't care. Um, people, people think that people care about that stuff. And by, by talking about it, it, it almost shows like I'm caring, but I, I don't, I just want to kind of make them feel stupid because they are. So have fun. I don't care if you, you get the one or two dislikes an, an episode because, uh, of that same person or two who goes on and watches and just wants to be like, Oh, I'm going to dislike Look at this. Oh, and then goes and probably has no friends. So have fun with that. Um, packs a punch left guard. He's going to be left guard the entire time. Um, throughout this review, he has played left guard. He has played right guard. So he has some versatility. Um, he has, and I should, I should probably bring up guys resumes a little bit more than I do, but he played in the CFL. He played in the NFL. He played for a few different teams, but I do not remember off the top of my head. So uh, I watched his last year's film um, with the Carolina Panthers because, you know, obviously the last year of somebody is going to be uh, the closest resemblance of what you're going to get from that guy. Um, so here they're, they're obviously the, the offensive line is um, they're, they all slide left. You're going to have the uh, number 40 uh, fill in the edge right here. And then the, uh, the split flow right there also helping um, that fullback uh, to, or running back to block anything on the edge. So Van Roten doesn't have to worry about this threat because he's sliding so hard to the left because there's two guys filling in off of that edge. So he has room to really – he is flexible to really not guard against his A-gap because the center should uh, slide left pretty much no matter what. And if, and if he does let that guy beat him to his, to his left side, the center I'm talking about, then that's completely on him. So um, he's a little bit more aggressive with getting to the, the four tech and it punches with the right hand. You're going to see it obviously creates a ton of um, distance. Now he's not completely throwing him because that guy is trying to uh, laterally step in and chop that arm away. But um, you definitely see that Van Roden, you can see how broad his shoulders are. Like it's, it was weird. Cause I remember I was watching him and I was like, and I marked down that he had long arms because I always noticed that he was reaching guys who were pretty far away, whether that be reaching in front of him or reaching like to the side. I was like, he, he he has long arms, right? And then I looked at his measurables, like, oh, 33 inch arms or whatever it was. I was like, what? Like, how does that make sense? But then I started noticing just how wide his shoulders are. So um, it kind of makes up the difference from his arm length. So if you have really broad shoulders, it's kind of the same thing, you know? So you, I think that should be more looked at uh, both shoulders and arm length. Um, because if you are to extend with your shoulder, like that's like, this is part of your arm up to your neck. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, if you were completely square and you reach out, then yeah, that's, that's your, that's your strict arm length. But if you're starting to reach like this and you're, and you're trying to, you're overextending, that's part of your shoulder as well. So like, I, I think that should be measured a little bit more than it is, to be honest. I think, I think the, 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 the width of the shoulders should also be measured. Um, that's just me. So reaches them, creates some good distance, uh, stays tight, checks the inside. Uh, the inside guy starts to beat the center a little bit to the inside. A little like ricochet block, power off the back foot, instep, drops his shoulder, and uh, stands him up. So good play, um, good aggression getting to this guy. You're going to see he's in a pa he packs some punch with, with his punches. I, I like his punch and how, how strong it can be. Um, and then, I, like I said, once he's committed to the outside, he checks the inside and drops his shoulder, like I said. So, so good job there. Um, one, getting to the outside and then continually scanning for the, his next threat. Um, which is one of his weaknesses. Like I said, there are some times where his eyes get a little bit locked on or he, he vacates something that he shouldn't. Um, all right, left uh, yeah, left guard, three tech. He has, I said, some power um, in, his, in his punch here. So good pop, no feet. So takes like that brace step right there, brace drop step to create power off the instep. He's going to climb a little bit um, with his right foot. This is just to cover the play side. So he does a good job with that as it's a um, – this is like a belly zone option. Looks like – but they're what is it, like a boss read? Hey, it might be a boss read. I'm not going to try to get into that right now. But um, good pop. Gets under the guy. Gets his hands inside. He's going to clearly stand the guy up, which is great. The guy, but the guy stands up, creates some distance, and now, he, and, and now he steps through and pulls Van Roten down. So what I want him to do is pop and and now run through your hands. You don't you don't want to start to reach for a guy um, 
you know, reaching over hard and not taking your feet because this is, this is what can happen. So once he pops them up, I want to see him climb them, widen his base, get off of his, in, or work off his insteps and just, and just climb them like a tree. If you're thinking about like you're climbing a really wide tree, like how people, you know, say with, with your feet like that, like you're, if you can imagine your head, that's what he needs to do. We call him like run, run to uh, climb that tree to the second level. Uh, he reaches a little bit and his feet become a little bit inactive. Um, they, they're too far into place. I want to see him drive that guy a little bit more um, off of the line of scrimmage right there. And that's why he gets thrown to the ground. Um, no cover before engage on this play versus the two tech. Okay. So the Panthers are running an outside zone. Um, obviously they have some they have hard penetration into the into the uh, the B gap through with, with Aaron Donald because it's Aaron Donald. So McCaffrey's gonna have to obviously uh, change his reads from the you know maybe from the outside inside to now the inside is becomes his first read because it cre- crosses his face so quickly that now he's gonna have to go for the inside. But regardless, because it's so far of an outside angle, McGovern has to, I mean not McGovern uh, Van Roten uh, has to make sure that he covers the play side. And he does do the scooch. He he does the scooch technique. You see where this step this step's gonna go backwards, um, backwards and horizontal. And this step is gonna go pretty much on the even plane. Usually, usually you see this foot going backwards a little bit, and this foot um, just going horizontal. But technically, it is supposed to be. It, they are supposed to be uh, loose ground vertically and horizontal um, at the same time, like almost like a hop. So he he, he does a scooch. And this is more like he actually does a scooch technique, but he doesn't have the best like lateral athleticism where he doesn't cover the, the, the most ground. Like idea, ideally, he takes this, these steps. He's a little bit farther over. Like maybe his, th- this left foot is in, on the inside of the hash. And then you want to work your left hand into the center of the chest. The right comes over like clamp. Uh, I usually call, I, I call it a clamp. Um, comes over with a clamp and then he works his left hand as the pivot point and he spins his hips around to, to, to face him to the, to the, uh, to the backside of the play. Um, he's not able to cover a lot of ground here, even though he does kind of use a proper footwork, but the guy's able to, to engage and stay over the top. And then eventually, uh, well, he could have gotten the tackle, but he didn't. So it's not the easiest play for Van Roten, but you see some of the lack of uh, lateral athleticism from him there. Van Roten sack allowed on this play versus Donald. All right, which is not easy, obviously. Okay, <laughs> it wasn't Donald. This is some of him, like, he, he, you're going to see some blitzes and some stunts and things like that that he doesn't pick up. Like, there's some of the awareness, like, like uh, I don't think it's a lot of the athleticism that hurts him because he, while he's not the most, and we did see the last play, he's not the most athletic guy. Um, some of the smarts tends to hurt him, I would say, a little bit more off the top of my head before we go through all these 49 plays. But um, here, Donald sets us up really well. And Donald is, is obviously the, ma- the main focus of this. Um, this left tackle, too, is really late to pick this guy up, to pick Donald up. Once, once you see like this uh, number 56, which is Fowler, acting in the way he does where he's showing he's going to go inside. You can see that one. it almost takes for the 56 to cross the left tackle's face before he reacts to Donald. But at the same time, um, I would like to see Van Roten commit a little bit less. Like, yeah, it is, it is Donald, so you might have to turn a little bit of the tank, like I say, um, turn a little bit more of that base. Oh yeah, actually I forgot too. We're we're on play four. Somebody I got somebody asked, and, and it was a nice comment. He said, "Great show, uh, but you should introduce yourself." My name is Joe Blewett. Uh, I am the host of Blewett's Blitz. Uh, my name is in the <laughs> it's in the is in the show. So uh, unless you just thought that Blewett meant something else, but that's my last name, Blewett. Uh, so Joe Blewett, twenty seven years old. I work for Jets X Factor. <laughs> I live in New Jersey. So. Um, I want to see him co- like commit a little bit less and be a little bit more aware, especially with Donald um, and, and he's penetrating like this and he's not kind of just taking you straight on. You should kind of feel that stunt um, and he doesn't feel that stunt. He commits completely to it and the guy blows by him w- and he notices way too late where he comes off of him. So again, if Donald is going to try to penetrate and, and be that picker, um, I want to see him get a little bit more lateral ground, uh, shoot his left hand, and maybe even shoot his right, but but stay mostly square to the line of scrimmage 
and and almost like cross shove them, play play along, and and shove them to the um, left tackle, and be prepared to drop your to, to redrop your post um, for number fifty six who loops around and gets the easy sack on on Newton. So uh, he overcommits right there, and he's a little bit slow to to recognize it um, in in the overall sense of like the people's body language thing, like uh, things like that. So um, next play. He's going to be – oh, better stump pickup. Okay, then the, I don't know if this is the very next play or not. See, okay. So I, pretty identical where you have one guy who's going to try to try to pick, uh, try to penetrate that B gap, um, try to take up the block of Van Roten, and that's what the penetrator, that's what he really wants to do. Um, doesn't matter if he's going to try to cross his face. You usually see a lot of stunts where the guy's like crossing his face a little bit because it's to really suck him to the other side. Um, and then the other guy's going to loop around. But then you also have like a lot of – you have to also make, make sure to pick up this guy. You, don't, you just can't not worry about this guy because guys are taught um, to both want to carry this guy in this type of stunt, which is a, which is a TE. If he's going to penetrate this or pick the, the B gap, he's taught to crash into this guy's shoulder. And then if now if this guy is too early to leave, let's say, let's say um, like I said, he, he crashes, he jolts the left tackle back, Van Roten leaves too early – to pick up the looper, now the B gap is hugely open. So you have to make sure to pick up that guy too, because that's a quick adjustment guys make. Obviously, if they don't, if they don't pick up that that looper, that picker. So um, doesn't commit as much to him. He shoots his right hand again. The one thing, the good thing about him is he will switch up his hand punches too. Like he'll he'll shoot with his left, he'll shoot with his right. Shoots with his right right here. Shoves, has his eyes up. He he's feeling he's feeling the the stunt right now. Shoves. Drops that post, drops his shoulder into the guy and gets under him. And is winning winning the leverage game and completely uh shuts down the play. So, like I said, good job not over committing, um, pushing off of that guy to get to cover ground laterally, um, to get even more into the um to get more lateral to his right side where the looper is trying to get through. Again, lands his hand inside, get under the guy, and uh now he won that play. So Better, better stunt pickup. That's a better example of it, obviously. Good run block. Oops. All right. 90s Brockers, pretty sure. Um, looks like they have like a tight, tight zone read with, this, with, the, with the speed option. It looks like that's what it looks like. Tight zone read. So if he if he's gonna commit to uh, but that's that's how they're designing it. If if he's gonna commit hard to McCaffrey, Newton pulls the ball. They both go outside. This guy follows him number twelve, which I think is DJ Moore, and then they uh, he has the option to pitch as well. So this is like a triple option. Hands it off. Donald commits, and and number ninety two gets the block on him partially as well, or number uh, seventy two. Sorry, the right tackle. But we're watching Van Roten. Van Roten knows that the gap is inside that they're aiming towards. So he is going to be he's patient with his hips right here. Again, this is where I kind of say that he allows guys to define themselves. He doesn't want to jump too hard on this guy because then if he is to if he is to uh, take a lateral step, he's going to ha- you know the guy's going to cross his face. He's not going to be in an ideal position with his hips to cover the inside a gap. So he wants to be patient with his hips. Takes a little bit of a drop step. Runs his feet, nice and patient. Make sure to cover. Can't see where the left hand lands, but the right hand does land under um, the the shoulder pad, bending a little bit from the waist, but it's okay. Um, and, and there are some situations where you want to bend from the waist a little bit, but you don't want to be too 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 top heavy. Right hand gets inside. You're gonna see the movement he creates, stays on the block. So good job being patient. And then when he gets into that contact window, and he knows he can cover really lunging into him and getting his hands in good position to, to move him. As you can see right here, he really gets some good movement um, on, on Brockers. So positive seven. I think he's, I would say he's a slight upgrade to Brian Winter's play. Uh, I think the top level of Brian Winter's play is better. Like when he has some of those traps are really athletic plays, but I think Van Roden overall, what I watched is a little more consistent. And then you factor in injuries. Uh, Van Roden hasn't been as injured as as or nearly as injured, I don't think, as a guy in uh, Winters, and he also has a lot less penalties. That's a, that's a big thing of what the Jets brought in this year was a guy who didn't get or guys who didn't get a lot of penalties from every position. Whether I, I believe this year 
Ben Roten, McGovern, uh, Becton, Fant. Like, none of them really had a lot of uh, flags on them, so that's positive. All right, so this play is interesting. Obviously, he gets beat initially. Um, this is where I talk about like, him being – on balance, even when he's off balance, plus short area explosion uh, is what I would say this is. So, gets into his set versus Donald. I think he frames him pretty well. Uh, I can't see what his right hand is doing, but it looks like it it, dro it drops a little bit. And then Donald is able to get his right hand inside of him, his right hand inside of him as he kind of rushes the B gap and then transitions into like a straight uh, bull rush on him. Their hands meet, so no hand is is really winning right there. Um, but Donald is able to, like I said, bowl him a little bit back to get his momentum going backwards, plant hard, and then try to uh, rush the B gap. And you're going to see uh, Van Roten really thrown off balance right here, really, really thrown off balance. And then he's able to – this is where I say like off balance but on balance, like how quick he's able to, to, to widen a little bit and then explode all of his weights. Like think about it, he's completely off balance here. So when you're off balance, like you're tripping – all of his weight is on this leg. Like all of it is on that leg. And then for him to, in that same, within that same motion, turn that, all that momentum back and explode back, uh, you know, uh, ver like horizontally at, at this point is really impressive. Um, and then he lands his hands back on the shoulders uh, of Donald. But like watch, just watch in full speed again. Like that is, that's, an, this is an impressive play. Right there, that movement is. I'll, I'm gonna play it a couple of times. Just keep watching that movement. That is not natural for a 300 pound guy. Now he's not like the most like, and it's weird at the same time because he's not the most like loose hipped guy. But um, that is like power from the legs and like I said, just odd balance. You know, that's good play though. He 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 really recovered um, impressively there for sure. Uh, Van wrote an overset. Okay, yeah. Right, and I said he sometimes he does overset. So you have the left, you have the lot, you have the you have the uh, center through left tackle sliding their gap protection. Gap protection is different than man protection. Gap protection is more of like a zone based system. Like you think about it, you 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 slide, and you pick up whoever comes into your gap. Man protection is more sliding, and you're assigned okay one tech, three tech, four uh, five tech. Um, where sliding in the gap protection is a little bit different, and th that's why I say like like slide protection versus gap protection um is different that's what i should say um slide protection is man protection where gap protection is is uh is more zone based uh, offensive line blocking so um you should really say shuffles in his gap protection um so you don't get confused but gets a little bit too far outside Again, you don't want to square up with the guy. Uh, if anything, you want to play inside out. So you want this outside leg to be splitting Donald. He gets a little bit too far outside and a little bit too tight. You see how big this A gap is, even though he does expect his center to come over with him, which he does. Um, but Van Roten still gets – he's way too tight. This, this, this B gap is way too close where this A gap is too open. Um, so he slides a little bit too far to the outside. Um, Donald is a ridiculous athlete, so he's going to see – what's more ad advantageous for Donald at this point, this gap or this gap? Like it's, it's, this is basic geometry. So he leaves too much room here. Um, Donald's able to plant. Uh, looks like a, like a swipe into an arm over the center is able to catch him, but he has absurd freaking power for guys like 290 pounds. Um, Van Roten isn't able to recover because now he's working through the backside of Donald. Um, the center isn't able to make the, pull. Oh, he, he does, I guess. I don't know if there's a holding here or what, but obviously there's pressure in Newton's face. Um, and that's that's on Van Roden, that, that play to, to me. Uh, the center could have played a little bit better as well, but we're not evaluating the center. Um, is the center Paradis? Did he did he go did he go there? Hold on, I'm googling this. Was, was that Paradis who went to the to the? Uh, people are screaming at their computer right now that yeah, that is Paradis. But I'm I'm forgetting off the top of my head right now if he was the one who went. Yeah, he is in the Panthers. Okay. I'm not that mad about not signing him. I'm, I'm not, I wasn't not overly impressed with him watching his film right here. Um, just, just like little snippets I got of him. Um, but whatever. Uh, I could tell you, I don't think 60s Greg Little, but I think Greg Will came in at some point during the season and God, he was awful. <laughs> the rookie. I'm pretty sure it was Greg Little. who was, he's really, really bad. 
Um, stunt pickup power step. Okay. Again, you have more of a, of a gap protection to the left from the center to the left tackle. They, they shuffle left. They're running another TE stunt, which the Rams clearly like to do. Shoots his hands. Does commit his hips a little bit, but is still able to um, – they're, they're so tight right now. This, this is such a tight uh, stunt that he is able to um, land his hands, get extension on, on number 99 to help out the uh, left tackle. Sees the uh, looper, power steps, picks him up with his with his right shoulder and right hand, and shuts down the rush, and then gets back to the to the, to Donald. And what I mean by power step, instead of completely, uh, again, like this is your kick foot, this is your post foot in this situation, and a power step is when you're going to step with, uh, you're gonna you're gonna slide the other way with your uh, post foot. So typically, if you're sliding right, your left foot is up. And your and your kick foot's back, and you're sliding to the left. If you're sliding to the, if you're if you're dropping it to the to the, I mean, I meant to the right. I think that's what I said. If you're if you're dropping to the left, your right foot's going to be your post. I mean, your right foot's going to be your post foot. Your left foot's going to be your kick foot. And um, you don't really power step to the other side. But in this situation, he does power step, which is nice to see. He doesn't completely drop the post, and he just power steps, picks him up. Good job with the footwork. Um, I don't know if I explained that the best, but that that's a power step, and you'll and you'll see it's like power slides and stuff like that. It's like let's say, let's let's see him get into like a set. I'll, I'll I'll talk about it next, like pass that they get into. It's usually in pass sets. Okay. So he's blocking down, blocking back on the on the three tech, the loose three. Widens. Almost like more of like a like it's not, it's not a ricochet block, but it is. He's he's widening that foot to work off the insteps to create power. Lands his hand is a little high, definitely definitely a little high. I want to see him a little bit lower, but gets extension. He he feels number ninety three starting to lean into that right into his left hand right here. You see you see you can see obviously see that he's really working through that hand. That's the only contact point he has with McGovern uh, with uh I don't like you call him McGovern uh, with Van Roden. And then you're going to see him slide his, his hand down that bicep, slide it, chop it down, catch him again, get under him. Good job. That's, that's, that's nice. I, I love when guys get that extension, feel that lean, and then drop back to catch them. I, I, I like that a lot. We saw that from Fan, a, a player too, last review. Um, so good job. Am I screen sharing? Did, I, did you just not see that whole thing? I hope. Okay. You might have not. I don't know if I just screwed that up really badly, but – Talk about widening with his right foot. Um, again, to create some of that power. Left hand, a little bit high. Right hand comes somewhere over the top. Extension. Feels the lean of this arm. Feels that guy leaning to that arm. Slides his hand down the bicep. Chops that arm down. Hops back. Left hand inside. Gets under him, win winning the leverage game. And now completely shuts down um, that, uh, that, that three tech. I, I'm sorry if I wasn't sharing that. I was just talking uh, that, that happens sometimes. The only time, the only, the only thing to see that I'm sharing it is like a really minimal, uh, minimal green bar on the top. So sometimes I, I I'll forget to, uh, to see that or click or whatever. Um, Van Roden hands high, strong anchor. Okay. So, so this is what I'm saying. So post foot, kick foot. Now, if he were to keep this, this uh this kick step back or this kick foot back and shuffle horizontally with that one while shuffling horizontally with this one that, that's called a power step um i don't know if i've talked about that much on here but you have these guys sliding left these guys sliding right um he's taking on the three tech actually the four tech left hand lands a little high again so his his hands do have a tendency to land a little bit high so i want to see them a little bit lower fan has a similar issue But the guy starts to bull rush him. He gets right into his pads. He's gonna do like a mini hop here, and he's probably gonna hop again. Yep, that's the proper way. You, you again, you don't want to walk back into it because then you're never you're never getting your full power under guy. Think about it. If you if you're if you're walking backwards, you're only as that other foot comes up. You know, if you're walking as that other foot comes comes up, you're only generating that force off of that off of that one foot in the ground. So if you're getting walked backwards, you're only creating pressure off of off of one foot. So when, if you hop, 
you're you're getting the the pressure off of both feet, which is going to shut down that bull rush. You don't want to uh, walk backwards. So again, gets that bull rush as he's anticipating it, hops back a little bit, and then hops back even farther, really really low. In step, in this this foot is, looks like the in step as well. Yep, you see that in step lands right there, and he is super low and generating a lot of power from the ground right now, up and through that guy. Um, left hand gets under and gets into his bridge. So I'm talking about the bridge where that's like your final standing point. You're not really low anymore, and you're just standing straight up, and you're underneath the guy, and that's like your last ditch effort. A lot of a lot of stress on that lower back right there, but um, good job getting into that bridge at the end right there and standing this guy up from the quarterback. And that bridge usually comes. Like, you can continue to hop back into your uh, into your anchor, but the quarterback's going to be there. And and offensive lines, when they're not practicing with the quarterback, will practice around a cone. So, if it's you know, they, they know how, how much depth they have as a tackle, guard, center, um, based on a three-step drop, play action, five-step, seven-step, whatever it may be. Um, so he knows Newton's going to be behind him. So he has to get into that bridge. He does gets under the guy and, and uh, shuts down the rush. So good job with his anchor right there. He has a strong anchor and there's times you're going to see a really strong anchor, even when he is um, not in the most ideal position to start off the, the, uh, the anchor ring. Um, so he has a, he has a really strong lower body in, in my opinion. Gets into his set. Sees number 92. He's, he's obviously just the closest threat to him. So that's what he's going to read first. Drops his shoulder into him, creating power off the instep of, the, of that uh, kick step. Obviously creates some movement on him. Good job helping your center. Doesn't know that the quarterback throws the ball already. And now since he can take care of the center, he wants to go take care of whoever the left tackle is taking on and gets a hit on him too. So he definitely he plays hard. He looks to hit people. I, I like that about him. Uh, next play, power. Yeah, you. All right, so he drops back in his pass set. He's reading fifty-one, who is his, his initial threat because he's obviously lined up right over top of him. Sees that fifty-one breaks back. Uh, as soon as 50, 51 starts to break back into coverage or take an angle, uh, an angle back, uh, angle back into like a hook zone, his eyes flash to his left because pre-snap. If, you, if you're reading the threats, the center's most likely going to pick up the nose tackle. This is his threat. He knows there's two, two guys outside right here. So he's going to read the outside after that guy drops, out, uh, drops back, reads the outside. He sees, and good job that he does because we didn't, and he wasn't aware of the, the, the defensive alignment. This is why alignment pre, pre-snap is so important, this example right here. Um, if you weren't and you just stayed inside 90, is, 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 is that Pecco? Or I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. It, just because he has those dreads or whatever it is um, doesn't mean it's Pecco. It might be Pecco, though. I could be a thousand. But that's the one I feel the most wrong on when I guess. I don't really feel right about that. But um, reads to his left, sees 93, which I believe is Sue, um, rushing. And uh, that, no, uh, that the uh, left tackle is picking up the, the outside linebacker, drops his shoulder. And uh, again, ideally, he covers a little bit more with his hips right here and starts to make his way with his feet over into this gap. So I would criticize him a little bit for that, where um, he better be right with his shot because if, if he's not, uh, he's going to be able to rush right through that B gap. So I like to him cover a little bit more with his feet, but – Drops his drops his feet a little bit to create some power. Um, lands again, and I like his hand his hand placement's pretty good in terms of like trying to move guys, whether it be into the ribs or the hips. He really knows how to how to use those hands in those type of situations. Other ones they're a little bit too high sometimes, but lands into the ribs and extends them. And listen, this is the part. Okay, so at this point, he completely takes Sue off of his rushing angle, and he doesn't just completely truck him over here. And that this is this is a play. This is a classic play on Twitter where I'm not going to name any big names, but a lot of big names have put this up as, oh, Van Roden, look at the power, generates power from the ground and trucks this guy and pancakes this guy. True, I guess, but he then his right hand to the ribs and he stands him up and is going to throw him over a little bit, but look at Sue's right, right foot. You see what lands on that guy and he slips off of it? That's what really happens. So that's why I don't like to put up bullshit plays like that, even though I could. But good job, even without that, just throwing him completely off of his track. So he would have been like here, um, and, and shut down the rush. So really, really good job in terms of like his strength right there and, and the hand placement. The, the feet could have been a little bit better, um, but it's, it's okay. Obviously, it works out. He won that rep. Uh, 14 doesn't cover. 
Okay, so number 90 again, which may or may not be Pecco. This one, he does like another mini scooch, but this one, it, 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 it looks like he's not trying to cover a lot of ground. Um, and they're, they're running like this, t- this tight zone split with that fake orbit mo- uh, with a fake orbiter on the backside. Um, and you can see like the last time, like he, he at least covered some ground. This one, he, he is taking like a scooch, but he doesn't cover really any ground. Like his, his, his hat, his helmet never comes close, even crossing that guy's face. Like it gets almost even, but he, he starts to lean in, um, and not cover with his feet way too early into this. So again, I want to see a more, a more dramatic step inside and really hop over there in that scooch technique. Um, again, left hand in working to the V right hand comes over top of that, of that clamp. And you're going to torque that guy using a lot of core power to, to get into the backside while you work your hips around and then you get under him um, and you stand him up. So he kind of leans into this block. You, you have uh, the D tackle who is able to, to stay, keep his hat on the play side, stand him up a little bit, read the running back, read the running back, read the running back, and get in on the tackle. So he, he needs to cover with his hips on, on that play, and that's, that's because of his footwork um, on that. And it looks like, you know, obviously, like I said, you want to work to the V of that neck when you're trying to use that as a pivot point and get around it on a reach. So, uh, Pancake. I'm not, I, I think I'm not being consistent with sharing my screen. I hope I was sharing it the last one. I think I was. Um, all right, pancake. All right. So they're all, they're all gap protection uh, sliding to their left or they're, they're gap protecting all, all shuffling to their left, I should say. So because there's no, there's no threat immediately to his left side. That's why he's staying a little bit more anchored down versus the, um, versus the three tech who crosses his face initially. So. I'm, I'm obviously that's okay, but at this point, it's more so. You, your people criticize. Oh well, he left the guy and he let the let the hit uh, on the on the quarterback, but that's that center's job. Once the, once this guy crosses his face, you pass it off to the right guard. The right guard picks it up. Clearly, this is the right guard's job right now. You are showing whether whether that be that Van Roden can feel you or he can see your hands or whatever it might be. He thinks you have this this uh this defensive tackle so at this point this guy needs to completely commit because you are showing van roten that you have that guy van roten leaves it paradis doesn't commit to it the the uh then this guy is able to to work into the a gap get the hit but good job overall by van roten engaging feeling the center come on that block with him okay now the center has him oh shit my left tackle is getting beat inside. I got to cover some freaking ground and truck that guy over. And you can see him just, just drop his shoulder right into him. Literally just extends um, with that, like that force absorber that he's using as his form, drops his shoulder into him and trucks that guy over and gets on top of him. Again, we'll play it in full speed. You could, you could see that all as it comes really quick. It's quick processing from him. Sees it, trucks him over. The, the hit comes on and there's a pick, but that's, uh, that's not on him. That, that's on the center. So play 16 commits too early again this is this is probably his biggest his biggest problem um for me uh or one of them is is definitely committing too early where again the drag hand this is the drag hand there's a difference between overlap overlap and drag drag is no contact with the inside guy the overlap is like him him having his hand onto the center which is more to let the center know uh hey i'm here you know I'm, i'm here for that a gap if you need me the the drag is more for him and, and himself to to feel the a gap if he doesn't see any pressure coming into it, um, but he's a little bit too quick for me to to just to just leave um, inside gaps. Hold on a second. All right, and we're back. Sorry, I got a uh, ring at the doorbell. So. Again, we're talking about the formality of the right hand not actually being the, the proper drag hand where he's really looking. Um, and it looks, like he, it looks like the arm hits and he feels that contact, but he still looks to come in outside. Even though the guy is mostly blocked. Like, I know he throws the left tackle back, but he doesn't do anything um, to affect that guy. But he lets pressure right in Cam Newton's face. He ends up, you know, missing the throw or chucking into the dirt um, right, right by McCaffrey's feet. But 
at this point, again, I want to see him playing inside to outside and at least check the inside. Obviously, his eyes are on the edge in 51, but once 51 drops into coverage, I would like to see his eyes, because he's blocked, like, I would like to see his eyes check back inside and then outside. Block, any, block inside, outside. His eyes don't ever check inside. And he uh, commits way too early to the outside, and then there's pressure in, in Newton's face. So um, needs to check the, the inside um, on, on that play. Next play versus the Cardinals. Uh, chop. Van Roten Chop. All right. <clears throat> All righty. A lot of times here, you're gonna see, you're gonna see him hit the center to to snap the ball. That was like that was how they snapped the ball in in, in Carolina. Um. So. Okay. So obviously he jumps inside to take number ninety eight. Shoots both of his hands. His hands might be a little bit narrow. Shoots both of his hands. They disengage. Shuffles outside to, to, to obviously match his guy. Matches his guy. The guy transitions into a long arm. You know, he's going to use a lot of pressure into that, le- into that left arm. And he's going to try to rush. And he's going to try to rush through that arm. Um, creating that distance and creating that um, kind of that pressure on to Kyle Allen. He, Van Roten feels it. At first, his hand is on to the uh, shoulder. Feels the long arm. Chops it down and rips down the shoulder pads um, with both hands. Again, when you're leaning into that arm and you're all your pressure's on and it gets chopped, your 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 momentum now goes through that elbow into the ground, um, which it does. And then he continues to, to rip him down and jumps on top of him, um, and the ball is dumped to McCaffrey uh, for what was most likely the first down. Eighteen effort. All right. As you can see, the effort. Um, the one the, he so he he open pulls with that bucket step, bucket step, open pull. There's square, there's square pr- pulls where it's more of a shuffle. There's skip pulls where you have more skip footwork. Um, both of them are done for different things. When you when you open pull like this, it's it's when you're going to cover a lot of ground. Um, the the skip pull, square pulls are more for really um, could be for for fold for like uh, pin and folds or you're pulling only one gap or when it's going to be um, pretty condensed. But when you want to get outside on this uh, jet sweep, uh, obviously it, it, you want to cover more ground. So you open pulls, takes a good angle to 36, gets hands on, pushes them off. Doesn't just, he, he's not a guy to just push them off and be like, okay, well now I'm just going to um, let the play happen. Like he wants to continue his block, which is a good sign of his effort. Blocks again, shoves them backwards again and continues to run them down. Um, until the until the whistle, so uh, nice effort from from Van Roten. Hands anchor. Okay. Shuffle right. Uh, you have gap. You have gap pro right. Gilligan left with the left tackle when a guy is left alone. Okay, so there's a couple different like things like, and we'll go through them. But like you have, um, like I said, you have sl- you have slide, you have gap. There's a bunch of things you have. You 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 can have um, double dual, where you have the right the right guard and right tackle slide out, uh, the left guard left tackle slide out, and the center is locked on the nose tackle one tackle. That's like a double dual. You have you have molly blocks where. Let's say this guy was a little bit tighter, but then there's pressure off of the edge. He's locked on to the outside guy, and he scans the in, he he can scan the inside. And then if the pressure was to come from the outside, he's going to go underneath of the um of of the tackle to block that guy. So it looked like it was his the tackle's fault, but really it was a molly. There's a molly call, and he was supposed to drop underneath and pick up that guy if he were to come. So like there's so many different type of blockings, uh, things you can do. Um, but Slides inside, shuffles inside, punches with the left. Looks like he lands it on the outside of the shoulder. I would say I would like to see him a little bit lower here. He, he, he looks like he's standing a little bit too straight up. It looks like his knees have a little bit too um, much straightness to them. Guy gets into his chest. His right hand comes underneath. And then um, the good thing about this is, 
So left hand on, right hand on. And the thing about too, when you're, when you're, when you're going back into your anchor, um, if you're not going to, if you, if you are getting walked back, there's like another thing. If you are getting walked back, sometimes you can't necessarily help it. If you don't have your hands on, you don't want to take both, just like kind of like, um, I'm not going to compare it to that. You want to make sure both, both your hands don't come off at the same time. Because obviously if you're one arm, literally just, press against anything your arm can press the wall but if both your arms are working are, are coming back at the same time now you're getting pulled back so you want to you want to rotate hands that's why you look like a lot of fighting because you always want to have a hand on a guy you don't it's never just oh both hands off because now your chest is your effed so you really need to always have force against force and fighting so um he gets called inside his right hand still on now you're gonna see the alter the the alternate left hand on as getting bold right hand on left hand under or sorry, yeah, yeah. So you're gonna see right here. Okay, ready? So left hand on, right hand comes on, left hand resets and gets under. Right there, you see the reset as he's getting back into his anchor. This is all while he's getting back into his anchor. Now, once that's on, now his right hand comes under. He goes double unders, gets gets both under, gets under his pads, lifts them. And you can see the pressure that he's creating off of the end step. You see what I'm saying? The knee now with the knee like this and the end step, it, he's, it's either you're going to slide or he's going to snap your knee in half. And that's really the only way he's going to get to you if he's trying to fight directly against that end step. And you're going to see him slide a yard on that foot. Watch that back foot. You see it sliding like that? <laughs> sliding on a cleat like that and through a 310-pound guy, you, there's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of force. So, um, But he's able to stand him up, um, get into that bridge right there at the end. Um, and stand the guy up so again good good block um, a little bit high at first but good good resetting of the hands for sure um, and some other things tt stunt all right so these two guys are in a stunt yeah okay gets a new pass out to his left initially post kick Guy's going to cross his face. He's going to drop his post to now become his kick. And now his kick is his post. Drops the post. Right hand on. Obviously, at this point, you know, for him, does he really think that this guy is trying to beat him? Or is he, or is he just picking number 61? So he notices that. He has to notice that. So he's going to stay long. Turn the turret, not the tank. Cross shove him. Keep his hips square. Now drop his post again. And look, he has his right hand on this guy. Left hand comes to pick up this guy. Left hand lands right into the chest. Good, good timing right there. Bang, right to the right to the chest. Boom. Creates force off that and and gets underneath of him. Good play. This is a good play. Like I said, I'm higher on Fant and Van Roden and others are. I'm lower on guys like the Seer. Um, and the next guy you're gonna see, Peanut, I'm not as high on. Um Perryman, I'm higher on the people. I, I like Perryman. I, I think Perryman, Fant, Van Roten, uh, you know, again, I'm not hitching my wagon to the guy, but I'm definitely higher than thinking they're just oh, a, a jag or they're going to be re replaced in the year. Like, they, they might have a couple years here. Um, more, obviously, Van Roten, even if he plays decently this season, just because he's going to be 31-32 next season, might mean he may be he might be replaced regardless where Fant is, what, 27, 28. So he could have another three, four, five, six years in him. So um, Van Roten's going to be replaced probably no matter what. Um, Perryman's at 27. So if he has a really good year, he could be signed for another year or two while they build their core, I, I think. you know, He's not a long-term piece, but um, counter OF. So again, he open pulls and he pulls tight to the line of scrimmage. You don't want to start bubbling out too wide. And then have to and have to like really turn your momentum inside. Like if 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 you were to get really like get depth right here, it takes more to turn and react to guys. But when you're tight, it, it guards against quick penetration and things like that. Um, and allows you to change your angle a little bit quicker. So he um, you're gonna have down blocks. He's gonna work to the is he gonna work to the back of that tight end? Oh uh, yeah, okay to to the backside backer. And they're planning on um. That's odd. Okay, I'm not going to even say what I'm looking at because then it's going to become weird. Um, but he open pulls. There's a, there's a little bit of penetration right here through the A gap that kind of throws him off his track a little bit. It does it does hit him. He's off of his track. But good job staying tight 
coming against the inside, just how the run is designed against this front, coming, coming, working to the inside shoulder, not the outside shoulder. So he, if anything, um, he wants the linebacker to try to, to try to, uh, to squeeze the run. Linebacker comes into the, into the contact window, steps towards him, drops his, drops his weight into him and pops him up. So good job, not letting this affect him. Stay tight, evaluate his threat. He's going to the outside, stay inside. That's where McCaffrey's coming. He's coming to the inside. Once he gets enough ground um, inside, he's gonna, he's, he, can, he can attack him outside. But he doesn't want to attack him outside early because then he can scrape over the top. But when he's getting to his level, that's when he can attack outside. He does that, drops his shoulder, pops him up. McCaffrey makes that one cut and uh, runs for 70 yards. So watch, watch the nice tight pull, even not affected by that. Takes on the inside shoulder, pops him. McCaffrey follows his box, make one cut to, to get a 70-yard touchdown. So good one cut, good speed in the open field, but that was the offensive line and him following his blocks. So good job. Overall, the whole team, good job. Um, Van Roten plow. Okay, again, he, he does like dropping his shoulder into people for sure. So whole line, again, slide, uh, shuffles right and gap. Left hand comes out um, as like that check hand. Um, which is just on the guy. You're just you're just checking him. You're just making sure he stays where he is. He stays at, at length of your arm. Once you see, once you feel him start to press into your shoulder and come into your gap, that's you're gonna that's you're gonna change. But you're you're literally just checking him and making sure he stays where he stays um, while not having your eyes on him. So he throws that check. Left hand on. He's evaluating the center. The center. The center. The center gets beat. A gap becomes it becomes threatened. He takes his check hand off, times it well, drops his shoulder, boom, trucks the guy over. <laughs> I like the power in his game. Pop, quick pop, bang. Right to the right to the turf. That was a. Uh... Whoa, why did that happen? Okay, that was weird. Was that in a? Did I just show that last play in in, in a, the Cardinal Stadium? Me, me, and my buddy try to go to a. a, a a game every single year in a different stadium. This year, it's not going to – we didn't go last year either. It depends on certain things. But we try to go to a stadium every year, and Arizona was one of them a couple of years ago. I think 2015, the Jets played there and got spanked on Monday Night Football. Um, that was the night I went. But the stadium's beautiful. Um, again, he's left guard every play. So, comes into his pass set. Uh, initially, I like the, 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 tight, the tight steps, the choppy steps. I like that his hands, see how his hands are more on, on guard here than, than remember Fant yesterday was playing a little bit too low. This is what I'm talking about, get your hands on guard. They could be a little bit tighter, but, but however he's coached, if he's coached, just keep him out like this, that, that's fine. They're, they're tight enough for me. So his hands are on guard. I'm, I'm cool with that. But the bull rush comes. He opens his chest, allowing 98 to get into it. So I would like to see him try to get the, the left hand on, the left hand on. The right hand come under to, to the to, un, under to the hip to the rib, and then start to rework your hands. But if you know if you feel the guys with the bull rush, you you can't just open your chest and try to hug them because your chest is the control to that point, which is the worst thing you want against a bull rush. So his chest gets controlled, um, and he allows pressure. So I would like to see him um, try, try to shoot his left hand right there and not let the guy completely get his chest. He hops. He's trying to hop back into his anchor, but um, it's too quick of a pass set. So, one, two, three, fire. So, next play. We're halfway through. Rip to ground. All right. Again, tells the center to snap the ball. The center center pulls on this play action, which is just that, that this is just to throw off the offensive line with that pull. I mean, the defensive line with that pull, we can't just do straight play action every time. So they pull him. He shuffles inside to, 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 uh, to, um, vacate or to, to cover for the vacated gap to the center leaves overlap with the, with the right guard. Okay. I'm here. You don't have to heat it. So that, that this is so that if this, if the, the right guard did not feel that. He's mostly going to commit to this because he did not feel that hand. Um, but he feels that hand. Now he's going to commit back to his guy. So good job with that, with that overlap. Continue to get space. Continue to get space. Shoots Sam with good timing. Bam, right into the chest. 
and feels the guy start to lean into his left hand as he shoots. So he's going to shoot, land it inside. Feels a lot of pressure in the shoulder into this arm, and then is just going to um, rip him down right into into the ground. So he feels as he's he's top heavy at that point. And then McCaffrey does. Oh, I was going to say does what he doesn't get a touchdown, but he didn't. But he almost did. Van Roten. This is going to be our last offensive line review in a while. I just realized that until Jets games, like I said, I'll have like 30, 40, 50 plays a game. So we'll be looking at it. And there's, listen, if I could do six, if I can do 74 plays on McDougal, if I wanted to, rec- if I want to record a hundred plays in a game, I could, but um, we could, we could talk about the good thing about recording one play is we could look at how is, how is Phantom this play? How is Van Roten or, you know, how is Becton? How, how is Darnold? How is, you know, Bell or, or Perrine? Like it's, uh, I cannot, I cannot wait to review a whole play of all Jets players and not just one guy. Um, it's gonna be real fun. Okay, time to snap the ball. Shuffle right, gap protection. Gilligan left, so left tackle. Gilligan, Gilligan like Gilligan Island. He's man on that guy, one on one. That is his guy. Looks like it might be an overlap with that right hand. Campbell rushes towards him. He shoots his hands, lands him what seems seemingly inside. Looks like he, looks like he goes to shoot his hands. Maybe maybe get chopped down. Campbell comes with the left arm and tries to generate a lot of power into that and and start to to long arm him. Continue rushing up the field. Torque. This is straight torque. So you're going to see how he's going to start to long arm him and kind of lean into it while rushing up. So he feels that pressure and he's going to take him where he wants to go Um, because he's leaning a little bit too hard into it. And he just, he's going to plant hard off of the, he's going to basically going to hop off of the right, plant off the left to throw. Like you're like whipping yourself. So you're throwing, you're throwing from your right to your left to your body. So it's, it's right, left body. So it's, it's one whip motion. Um, And that's exactly what he's doing. If you look at it like that, watch hop off of the left into the right. Or sorry, sorry, hop off the right into the left and whip it through your upper body, and it bling, and it brings Campbell right to his right to his knees, um, and he and he rips him to the ground. So I, I like that, I like that adjustment right there. Um, the the kind of that's a good feel for the for the game in terms of momentum and angles and how the guy's playing you and how you could kind of fight. And that's like, that's like a wrestler thing right there. That's that's a good job like feeling momentum and working against his momentum. Um, reach block on the back side of this um, outside mid zone. A little bit of a scooch technique. There we go. So you see that right foot go back and horizontal. Back and horizontal. Left foot goes back and horizontal. Uh, I don't know where his left hand lands. I can't really tell. But the right hand comes over top as a clamp. He he works that left hand as a pivot. Gets his hips around. And McCaffrey um, gets tackled. But this is a good job with a scooch technique right here. Good job. Okay, 27. Good pass rep. Worrying about his only threat right now, 95. Again, he's. I, I like. I like the proficiency with with his hands and starting to feel guys lean into their hands for sure. We've no, we're noticing that a lot with with him, which is good for sure. Big guys can tend to get to top heavy and they're trying to bully you. A lot of a lot of big guys are going to bully you, and if you can feel they're bull, they're bullying you, you can chop their hands um, while you while you hop back. You don't necessarily want to chop their hands while they're still on top of you because then they're just going to collide with your chest. Like you kind of want to you kind of want to invite their pressure into you. Like you're you're inviting them um to lean into you because like obviously if you're pushing me really hard and i hop back you're gonna even lean harder to push me because all of your weight is into your hands so you hop back and chop um they're gonna be super off balance where if you have that strong point like if if, if you're closer to me and i have a nice strong hand into you and you chop my arm you can you can chop my arm all day um but i'm not all necessarily off balance because i'm not leaning that hard yet but when you hop back and now i'm really leaning into you because i'm re- leaning for that pressure and you chop my hands, now you're now you're you're effed. So creates that little bit of distance. He feels him leaning to the hand, chops down at the elbow, catches him again and, and and stands him up. 
Cool. All right. 28. Leave too early. Okay. This is going to be similar to what we've seen. They're sugaring the A-gap. Both of them. Both the linebackers. So, like a double sugar, whatever you want to call it. See? Okay. So, let's go through this. Snap the ball. Shuffles the peco. So this is this is kind of on the center too. The, the center, narrow base, straight leg, ducks his head into it. Doesn't get good good hand placement, but I would like for him to stand this block just a little bit longer. Even though it, like this is I kind of give him a mulligan here because it's kind of like an iffy play. He's fully engaged with the center right now, so he's just trusting his center and then checking the outside. Now, maybe he wants to check the outside and he sees that. Maybe his head should flash back here and pick him up. So, I, I, you could criticize him a little bit for that. But he's assuming the center, which, like again, Paradise has got beat up a little bit, as you're seeing some of this review. Um, but checks the left side and then really commits to the guy who's already running past the quarterback's level. So, I don't think it's necessarily leaving and or looking here. But at this point, I want to see him him look back because this guy is taken care of. You were passing this off to the center. You 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 could assume the center beat him, but you don't know that. Where this, you could see it. So like it, that's not a killer one. Um, that's kind of him trusting his teammate. But obviously, his teammate didn't necessarily deserve trust on that play. Uh, shuts rush down. Play twenty nine. All right. Again. Snap the ball. That, that's really just to, like, guard against any, like, f false starts or anything like that. The like, pressure on the road. Um, well, that center doesn't have to really listen for anything. He's listening. I guess they trust him more than the center. And then he snaps the ball. Um, but the only thing that does is it kind of um, – I forgot what I was saying. Now I got, I got some text. But blocks number 92. Left hand looks like it lands inside. Again, really similar. Like it's it. So the guy, he, he you know, he, guy gets into his chest again. Um, I'm not sure where his left hand lands. It's the only problem with like this angle. I rather have angles from behind. But left hand lands. I don't know where. He feels this guy initially. Who like he tries to give him a little crossover. You see him like like this little crossover to the left, try to get him to react to the left to beat him in the B gap, lands his hands on. McGovern doesn't necessarily fall for it. He, you know, he lifts McGovern a little, or McGovern, Jesus, uh, Van Roten a little bit. And then um, I don't know why that's happening. Uh, like pops him. Now he's going to try to lean into his left arm to long arm him. Van Roten feels that. I, I think I've been saying McGovern a lot. <laughs> So I'm sorry. This whole time I've been talking about Van Roden. I'm not going back and forth. Uh, GVR says, I, I, I don't know. So he feels that, chops him down, lands his hands again. So you're not always going to chop guys down to the ground. So, so chopping down and then getting low and then popping the guys, what you really want to do. Obviously, if they're to the ground, take them to the ground. But most of the time, if you have a good defensive lineman, even if they're leaning a little bit to their hands, they're not going to lean too hard. So you want to, to – to chop and then hop back a little bit and then pop him and get him underneath, which he does. Chop, hop back, pop him underneath. And then again, he hops back again. And now he's generating a lot of force to that ground and is under the guy's pads and lifting him up. Now, obviously, you don't want to be like this all the time because you're you're super reliant on a contact point. But um, he uh, – He's obviously able to, to to shut that rush down, and then they dump it off to McCaffrey. Ooh, who breaks that guy's ankles? Ooh, -wee. damn, nice play. Yeah, McCaffrey's the best running back in the NFL to me. I think Barkley has a lot of raw talent, but he doesn't read plays like McCaffrey does. He bounces a little bit too much still at the NFL level too. Obviously, you tell like best running back in the world. Like, listen, the Jets had a good defensive line, but for him to get one yard versus the Jets. Okay, another situation. Gap pro left, gap pro right. Knows he has a center inside. But again, it, I just want to see more active eyes here. He like once once he starts to see the center just engage with the guy, he completely disregards the center. Like that that's happened quite a few times already, or a few times already. And again, 
Okay. You see that he's going towards your center, but is your center winning right now? You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. They're engaged, but he's going to get this chip from McCaffrey. He's beat. I, I would just like to see him stay inside a little bit longer. Like he commits his hips really, really early. So I want to see him check that. Get a little bit more ground. You want? I want to see him drop a little bit more vertically because he's kind of he's kind of pigeonholing himself to to commit to one side because of how how shallow his his drop is. When you're not engaged, get a little bit more depth so you can read both sides, whether it be through actually looking or peripheral vision. So um, usually we're not engaged. You want to get a little bit more depth than, than he has. Um, so I want to see him. Yeah, like I said, get get a little more depth. Uh, check the inside as well because the inside gets gets beat again. Um, and there's and there's pressure on on Allen. So again, Parrot is struggling a little bit with Carolina. Jets didn't sign him. Hey, not the end of the world, obviously. And they pick up a sack, and Van Roten blocks nobody on that play. Chop arm. Okay, we're starting to see a lot of similar things. Last couple plays, it feels like it's like bouncing back and forth between chops and and uh, him leaving guys too early on the inside, which you know, nice one right there. Okay, so. Picks up the four eye. Again, a little bit of a change up in his in his shot. Like you don't, you know, with with fan, I I criticize him too much for the well, at least the footwork. But him, forty five degrees set, forty five degrees set, forty five degrees set. It's the same thing with the hands. You don't always okay. He always slides. He always shoots to the left. Always shoots to the left. Always shoots to the left. So then guys are gonna start to plan. Okay, I'm gonna sidestep that 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 left and chop it. Like you know what's coming. You know you want to change stuff. So um, shooting the right is aggressive because if you're if the guy's outside of you you're shooting your right you're turning your hips and you're turning your torso which is going to naturally open your hips to the outside so if that arm gets defeated he chops it now your momentum is really going to the outside now the a gap's going to be open so you have to be sure if you're shooting with the right hand um at least in this scenario that you're going to land it he's confident he's going to land it pops the guy now there's now there's like a disconnection now it's like start from square one the guy starts to lean to that arm a lot of pressure into that arm, and then he is going to chop it down. Hands back on, feels that left arm lean, chop down to the right, and he's going to hop back a little bit. Oh, no, he just, he just throws him right into his knees. A little bit of pressure on Allen, but Allen gets it off. So Good block versus Buckner. All right. Tap the center, snap the ball. Shuffles to his left and his... His pass set. He might get a little bit too far to the outside right here, but he he is he's 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 pretty good. Buckner tries to give him this little like crossover bull rush. He's high. Van Roten sees the bull rush coming, hops back, double unders. See so he feels he starts to feel it coming. Shoots both of his hands underneath as he hops back. Go straight double. That's that's called. I, I call that double unders. You're coming up like that again. If you're gonna anticipate that bull rush, just scoop them. You gotta be. You, you obviously gotta shoot at the right time. You don't want them to come too wide. You don't want. You want, the, you want the, the hands to be like a, a dramatic like scoop, but um, for that double under. But he lands at the right time right here. Double unders, nice and low. In steps, both in steps under his pad. This guy, he's not, he's not winning unless he throws uh, Van Roten off, off balance. Tries to an angle to the inside, and he just uh, obviously shoves him. He gets over the top, but that's for the chase down. That's he can't expect that. So, all right, aware as a puller again. I think this is probably his. I think his power, um, his power in his hands, his 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 whiff. Um, his bounce while being off balance, his pulling, I'm going to say, is his strongest trait. So I think for the Jets next year, um, typically a lot of teams like to run just for whatever reason, uh, power, counter, to the right side um, more than the left. I don't, I don't know the stat breakdown of that. Maybe it's only like 55-45 or depending on the team's personnel. But I, I have a good feeling that for the Jets next year, because of who's playing right tackle – and who is the and who's going to be the right guard or who's going to, yeah he's playing left tackle and right guard they're going to be moving a lot of stuff to the left side on, on poles counters things like that because if you like in this situation let's just say you know let's say it's the opposite or not well let's let's say let's say they were pulling if this is if this is um if if you were like base block him 
or try to get him to the inside. He, and this is Becton. He has to kick this guy out. And then you have uh, Van Roten pulling to block the linebacker. Uh, they're going to create a lot of movement that way, I think. So I, I think you're going to see a lot of, of power counters going to the Jets' left side. Uh, I think that that'll be that'll be true. So if you see that, uh, at least think think of me a little bit. You're gonna see me break it down anyway. So I might gloat about it then. Good, nice, tight pull. They uh. Oh, okay, this is this is this is a trap. Okay, this is this is this is a trap run. Um, I was talking about a power in a different in a different sense, but this is a trap run as I look at it now. So um, you have down blocks. They're gonna try to they're gonna they're gonna try to fake a block right here with the right tackle to 91 to hold him there while Van Roten makes his way over. He's gonna work to the second level to 29, and uh, and Van Roten's gonna kick him out. So this is a trap run. Open, he opens, plants, generates power, and just drops his shoulder into him, trucks him outside. So. You probably want to see him really run through his feet, but he but he plants and kind of has a lunge into it, so he's really guessing where the guy's going to go. So he's he could be, he's a little bit out of control right here. You'd probably like again like to see him be a little bit more in control, but he really wants to to define that gap for the running back, drops his shoulder, and gets that guy completely to the outside. So I, I think he's a really good um, good puller. Thirty four overlap overlap uh, block buck back. I had to say. Oh, Buckner, I guess. <laughs> okay, I was like, block Buck. What the hell am I talking about? So, overlap, lets the center know he's there. He's on an island. He's sliding to his right or, or shuffling to his right. Buckner comes into, into that contact window, shoots his hands. Looks like the right lands onto the right. I'm not sure where his left is, but the right gets onto the wrist of Buckner. Um, Buckner continues to, to, to rush him, and he is able to – looks like it's hands against hands right here. Like, they're, they both have each other's hands and start to lean like their bodies into each other, and then they disconnect. Buckner goes over top. He, uh, Fant, or, uh, geez, uh, Van Roten leaves, leaves, lands his hand underneath the armpit. Gets better leverage. Gets underneath him a little bit. Right hand under. Lifts him and extends. So, he, he literally start, like, throws him. But this is obviously with with Buckner trying to – looks like he's trying to chop down and jump outside, but he throws him even farther outside. Now, the problem with this is, which I which you see Beckton do sometimes, where he just throws guys. If guys can maintain their balance, they're still on the play. So, if anything, you want to see him extend, but don't overextend when you're extending your legs and your arms. Like, like extend them, like almost like pop them, but continue to work through your feet because you don't want to just leave your feet with both of them leave both your hands. Now, now you don't have uh, any engagement with him and he's able to turn and get the hit on, on Allen because he's a ridiculous, he's a really good athlete um, to be able to plant that quick and turn that corner like that. But I want to see him maintain um, that, uh, that, that contact and not try to throw th so much of his body into throwing uh, Buckner 35, 15 more plays. All right, Van Roten. Okay, another pull. Again, so he, he's open pulling. A lot of open pulling, so I don't think they're going to be like tight pulls with the Jets. I don't think they're going to be like square uh, skip pulls. Maybe he can do them. Uh, the ones I'm, I, I've put up, I don't remember if I saw any. Haven't been any square or, or skip pulls, which is a little bit different footwork. But he just open pulls a lot. But again, really tight to the line of scrimmage. He's really tight to his guys. Again, to cover against any penetration, and for the most part on these on these uh, on these power runs, he's gonna want to he's gonna want to kick somebody out and take on their inside shoulder. So you don't want to get too far outside where the guy can penetrate inside of you, um, whoever you're picking up. So nice tight pull, to everybody tight, 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 tight. He's evaluating what threat he's gonna get, which is a linebacker or a 31 uh, who is who is Bayard, I think. Takes on the inside shoulder, drops his shoulder into him, and. Oh, okay. This is okay. So this is this is the be the best play. This is one of the best plays on on film of him. Opens, takes on the inside shoulder of his threat, pops him to the outside. Now we see now his eyes are active. Sees another threat coming to scrape over the top. So he knows this guy's momentum's coming outside or going outside, and he pops him. He's no McCaffrey trying to probably running right off of his ass. So now he's not concerned about this guy because McCaffrey's gonna outrun him. His eyes come to the next level. He sees that DB. 
gets in front of him onto his inside shoulder um, and, and blocks him. Obviously, McCaffrey gets tackled, but uh, the awareness right there, the, the, the technique in terms of staying tight, taking on the inside shoulder, active eyes, he's another threat, picks that guy up. Really, really like that play from, from uh, Van Roten. 36, anchor. Again, a scenario where he's not caught in the ideal position overlap technique. He's evaluating 54. Uh, they, they run this little like twist between each other where, where 90 is going to try to try to uh, start off to the to the the right of the center to to uh, to our left of the center, and he's going to try to pull the center over here. 54 is going to try to penetrate that B gap. That's exactly what's happening. Um, Van Roten gets caught in not an ideal position because he's reading number 54. 90 gets into his chest and starts to bull rush him, and he's able to seemingly – okay, so, so I'm not sure where his right hand is, but his left hand does land underneath, so good job working to the ribs. And then he he's actually is able to walk back into his into – his, so that's not an ideal position at all because he's walking back now. Walking back, creating pressure off of those insteps and get underneath a 90. Um, and then Kyle Allen just throws it up into like double coverage and under throws. And it's, it's should be an interception, but it's not. So bad job, Kyle Allen. But good job with his anchor right there to, to, to get that in the ground. Not from an ideal position at all. Leg drive. Right, so he's working on the combo. Looks like it's like a tight, it's like a tight zone split, and he's just working on the combo uh, with the the center to the second level. Um, and I like his hand placement here. Bending a little bit from – definitely bending a little bit from the waist. I, I want to see more active feet here to, to bring his upper body, not his upper body, bringing his lower body. But he's able to land his left hand, again, into the rib cage. It's not on the shoulder. So he definitely knows about hand placement to try to move guys. And then you're going to see him just keep working into that into that, um, that the rib cage, even though you know he's twisting his upper body and, and trying to rework himself and refit himself. Um, and you're going to see Van Roden continue to work his hand into that rib cage and just get a lot of drive from that lower body drive drive and he's moving that guy. Listen, it doesn't look like a ton that he moves them, but he does move them, you know, a good two a good 2 3 yards um or I would say 2 yards, which is which is enough room. Um creates a little bit cu uh, cutback lane for for McCaffrey and he, and he takes it for a few yards. So good leg drive right there, good hand placement even though he does um allow his upper body take his lower body a little bit too much right there. Ducks into block. All right. Really big, really big, like, brace step right there. Brace drop step. Widens with his right arm. He's allowing his chest to get controlled right there. So you don't want to see his hand widen that much. Even though the right hand is going to come over top of his, like, a, the, the clamp, it looks like. Dead air time. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm looking at something. But, again, opens his chest, gets his chest controlled. Because he ducks into the block a little bit. You see how he's leaning a lot from the upper body. Hands come wide. Chest controlled. McCaffrey tries to cut it back. He, uh, Van Roten gets stacked. His chest controlled. The guy extends him. Finds McCaffrey. Tackle for loss. So don't want to see him get his chest controlled as it does like that. Uh, 11 plays left. Jump set. Again, changing it up. He's you know not doing the same thing all the time, which is nice. Guy, guy is tight enough to him. Hmm. I was trying to see what Kyle Allen's looking at right there. But, um, again, jump set. The, the three tech is not expecting it. Hands into the chest. Extends him. Resets his hands. So, again, you don't, you don't want to – you don't want to – if you're going to extend the guy, again, you, you, if, if you're going to extend him and pop him, now there's distance created – between you guys now you are going to reevaluate and, and start the block again but you don't want to chase that block you want to create like some distance um at least you know in some situations so pops him doesn't chase it reevaluates 
lands his hands into the chest again. Pretty much shutting down that rush. Peripheral vision sees that number 65 is getting beat across his face. Gets on that block. So good, good eyes right there. Blocks this guy, but his eyes are still active and, and looking for other threats and picks that block up as well. Now we have 10 plays left. Pull, okay. If it's a pull, it's probably going to be good. Open pull, nice and tight again. Again, it's he's the reason that that's a 60-yard touchdown run. Open, again, when you're opening and you're dropping like that, now you're allowing your body to work through your hips um, and over top of that foot. You, you, you can't just – if your foot's straight and you drop it back straight, it's going to be hard to, to open your hips with a, with a straight foot, whereas if your foot's op like open like this – um, obviously you can, you, your, your hips can work past that. That's just, that's just physics. So nice, tight, um, open pull again to the line of scrimmage inside shoulder. And it's tight again. If he, if he looped around now, he's gonna be in more space. Now he's gonna be more square with the guy. Now it's gonna be harder, um, to take that guy on. Like he does continues to run towards the inside shoulder and gets in that contact window, drops his shoulder into him, drops his forearm. He's acting like that, like that shock absor absorber. And creating some pressure, pops him up, and again is the reason why McCaffrey does that. Which, which there's a lot of reasons. Good job by a lot of guys. You know, winning with his hat, winning with his hat. These guys all work to the second level. This is Van Roten's job. This guy needs to be a little more patient. Commits too early, 54, which is not Williamson. Oh, he doesn't – does he run for – okay, he does get in for the touchdown. Okay, I thought so. Really, really good pull. I, I definitely like his pulls. Chop. All right. Another chop against the Packers. Opens himself up, allowing his hips to work through his foot. Lines his left hand seemingly inside. Again, he's covering – He's covering the, the play side with his hips um, and making sure he gets enough ground laterally before he engages. He doesn't want to engage early and then be on an even plane with this guy in terms of his hips to the play side. Um, gets his hips to the play side first, lands his left hand inside, uses that as a pivot point, right hand underneath into the, into the rib cage. And, well, actually, it's the armpit. So it lands into the armpit, and he works his hips around. Works his hips around. Feels the guy leaning hard into his left hand again. Chops it down. Lands his hands back on, torques him. Oh, I really like this one too. Okay. Yeah, definitely like this one again. He's, he's opening his, his hips, but he's still staying square. That, that's another really good thing. He's not, he's, not, he's not completely committing his hips, but he's also um, gaining ground while not, again, committing his whole body, allowing you know, 95 or 96 to just penetrate that gap. Left hand inside, rib cage, or I mean armpit again, extends him, feels the lean, chops it down. Hands back on. Circular force strong to the ground. Awesome play. I like that again. Great play. All right. Fold trap. All right. Is this going to be a fold or is it going to be a trap? Yeah, they're trapping again. So down block again. He like open pulls into a gap, like a gap, like that's a gallop. That's interesting. Are they in? I wonder if they're anticipating that he, that this guy's on a knife inside like that because that's interesting footwork to to gallop. Unless it was supposed to be like a skip pull. This might this could either be an open pull that he just he just transitions it into into a gallop because he sees this guy like once he opens and he sees that guy across his face that's why he gallops, or it could be that this was supposed to be a skip pull and he kind of just changes on the fly into a gallop and then obviously just drops his shoulder guy and absolutely trucks him. But that's good awareness again right there, uh, unless unless they were planning on that guy knifing inside, which I really really doubt that they were they were guessing that well. Opens up, gallops, trucks that guy. Great play again. Caffrey. I think he recovers a fumble right here, too, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if he does or not. Uh, I don't know. I think the Panthers do, but 
a couple of good plays in a row. Ah, we're ending it. We're ending it. Well, not we're not ending this podcast. Almost, we almost are. Um, too heavy, far inside. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So another one. So this is where I'm saying. Okay. So now he's not. Too, so he's actually not too far inside. That's not what I'm. That, that that's not what I should have labeled this. Again, when I record plays, I I label them very quickly after watching the play one time. Um, after I record. So what it is is. He needs to, in this scenario, he's far away. So he's going to shoot with the inside. And just like I said before, when you shoot with the inside, what happens to your hips? Shoot with the inside, what happens to your hips? It opens them. So if you're not going to land that, 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 ins- if you're going to land that inside hand, but it's not going to pop that guy back, that B gap is now more open because your hips aren't covering it. Now it's just your upper body. So um, especially with the fi- with 55, who I think is one of the Smith. It, I know it's one of the Smith brothers. I forget which one it is. Um, is that Zadarius or pressed? Maybe it's Zadarius. So, um, especially with the more athletic guy who's going to beat you like that, I would like to see him be a little more conservative right here and get outside, shoot with the left, come under with the right. But because he shoots with the right, it opens. It doesn't really, it's not really that effective because um, he already lands his hand onto him first. So you're going you're to see him work through this left hand. The left hand lands. So now um, that, that, left, that right punch is not going to be as, as in, uh, as impactful obviously if you're going to punch somebody and, and they hit you first your point it's going to take away from your punch so takes away from the punch it opens his hips now he's uh he starts to lean hard into the and into into smith to try to cover against that b gap because he didn't cover it with his with his hips he uh, turns a corner and gets the hit on on uh, allen who still completes the ball but um i want to see different technique with his hands here um because he just opened himself up um, in that in that scenario, especially against a more athletic guy, shooting that right hand is definitely risky. Um, Forty four stump pickup. Uh, we're coming to a really bad play in this game. I remember what this game is now. All right, te stunt. Initially gets inside, sees the guy crossing his face to the outside, gets his hand on. Good job not overcommitting the hips. Again, you can see the hips are more pointing towards the last scrimmage. They're more square. Turret, not the tank. Commits a little bit of his hips. That's that's it's okay to commit a little bit of them. Sees the guy coming on the loop, drops the post, <coughs> drops his hands into him, gets his hands inside, and pushes him away and uh, completely shuts that down. So again, good job passing that off. Good job playing long right here, not committing his hips, really helping out his left tackle, and then picking up the the looper. Uh, it's not this play. It's the next play. It's off. That's that's it's it's kind of hard of one to explain. I remember, so I'm gonna have to go through it a couple of times. But all right, a lot of movement there from the Packers front. Okay, so you have the you have the TE. That's like the initial phase of this. So you have the TE. If they both overcommit to this guy, the looper comes and gets the sack. Now, if they if those guys um, now if like I said, if they both commit, this guy gets the sack. Um, now, if Van Roten commits to this guy and this guy, then fifty comes inside um, to the B gap for the potential sack. Now, if there's a different scenario where Little stayed inside for some reason. Um, I think that's a little, uh, is 72 little, I don't know. They, he, he put next to number 70, 75 and 72. So they might've had some injuries there. Um, but the left tackles weren't the best for him, but there, this is a multi-faceted stunt. Like this, this can work. Obviously the picker could be the first guy that works. The looper can work. If those guys ever commit, this can work. And this guy is, is really not meant to be like, okay, well, if the left, if the left tackle shuffles inside or anything like that, like he's always going to pick up this guy. So now that I'm thinking about it again, I'm working through this as I'm watching it. Um, this is the more open this. So these guys are hoping to carry these, both of the, both of these guys. So two V two. And then this guy's going to come in the B gap. That's, that's the design of this blitz. Um, but Van Roten does a good job again, getting, uh, you know, shuffling to the left in, the, in, the, in his, in his gap protection, throws out the drag hand, sees the stunt coming. Knows that the picker's there, even though like, oh, he overcommits a little bit with his hips. It definitely does. He's still able to get his hands onto, the, in, onto 90. And as he does that, he sees that 50's coming, drops, drops himself into the hip, extends him, obviously shoves 90, pretty good distance. 
picks up 50. 50 just turns the corner on him, but but Allen's able to get rid of the ball. So they, they picked up that stunt relatively well. Again, I want to see more square right there to take on more of that guy and then drop off um, because he did he, because he had to push off really hard right there because he wasn't in an ideal position with his hips. He overcommitted a little bit in terms of like his momentum to the inside to not pick up 50 like fully. Um, but still, like I would say, I would say that's more of a positive than a negative. This play, the next play is a very big negative. Um, the scenario, so I could, I could do it is I'm going to move this bottom. Okay, as you can see on the screen, the pack, the, it's the last play of the game. The Panthers have no timeouts. It's second and goal from the two-yard line with four seconds in Lambeau Field. They need this run. Van Roten, unfortunately, sees 51 right here, who I don't know if this is by design that he's not supposed to know his gap or they're just – um, or just blind luck that this really screwed up the offensive line in their assignments, but he taps the guy to, to, to snap the ball now. So he's having to evaluate. I don't, I don't know if he's thinking about he's in a, he's in a down block to, to, to 97 or what, what exactly is supposed to be, or if it's a zone and these, you know, he's going to step inside, he's going to step inside on 51, he's going um, to step to his left and pick up 97, and then he's just free to do pretty much whatever. And then he sees 51. And, and 51's momentum is taking him to the outside. And that's that's what Van Roten sees right here. He sees momentum taking him outside. And he thinks that he's going to continue outside. But the ball is snapped because he called for the snap. Ideally, they wouldn't have snapped it right here and would have let this guy align. But now it's a situation where he's coming over the top. The ball is snapped. And, and, and Van Roten is blocking like he's coming to the outside. Uh, 51 plants hard, gets his hands on. Van Roten's momentum is already taking him outside with that step. He's able to... Uh, to shed him inside, boom, tackle, and then he, you know, uh, McCaffrey drops his shoulder and spins off it, and Van Roten tries to throw him into the end zone, but it, it just doesn't happen. So, with here in this scenario, the only thing he could do is be more patient with his hips, I mean, with his feet, which is exactly what he needs to do. Like it's it's the it's the only thing he should have done, but it's it's a hundred percent necessity because even if he is if he is going to the outside on you cheat inside and then kick him out he's 50 he's, he's a linebacker you don't have to get a, a, your full load momentum into him you could kick him out pretty easily or or base block him and just create distance um you know or or, or you know reset the line of scrimmage with him um relatively easily so he needs to play inside to outside it's an inside it's an it looks like a like a tight zone inside zone so you cannot get beaten into your gaps you have to because this guy's inside even though his momentum's taking him outside cheat inside root your feet and block this guy inside to outside. He can't take his momentum outside and try to work inside because if he penetrates that A-gap, you're fucked. And that's exactly what happens. Lands his hand, you know, rips through him, contacts McCaffrey, and then he's not obviously able to get in. You know, he tries to get him in. And when I was, so I'm not going to say why I was in the hospital. It wasn't for a good reason. It wasn't because my family member or somebody else's family member. But I remember watching this in the waiting room. I remember this. Um, and it's crazy on screen, and you know, I didn't even realize it was Van Roten at the time until I watched this play again. Um, all right, continuing. I had to pause there for a second. Um, but again, yeah, it's. I remember this, and like I said, I like that he tries to throw him into it, and it looks like it gets so close. I don't know if we have the angle where he just I, – I forget if I thought that this was in or not. They obviously called on the field that it wasn't, but – so the ball is in McCaffrey's – Oh man, his left hand. Ooh, I think that if you had a view of this, just based on where the ball is now and his left hand is now. Oh man, that is so hard. That that's just you go with the call on the field. This is the only two angles they had, and they called it on the field. Because he, like I said, the ball is there now, and obviously he spins, so the ball goes back a little bit. But he really gets his upper body like halfway into it. So if the ball is like to his nipples right now, or like a little bit above, he's probably in. Oh man, that's yeah, that's tough. I remember watching that, but obviously it's not a, it's you know, not a good play from Van Roden. Uh, three more plays. Van Roden sn snatch. That's <laughs> I'm not gonna say it. Um, all right, so guys inside doesn't get too far outside. Ninety three um, angles to the inside, lands his hands on him, and starts to bull him. 
and he just, it looks like he just chops the inside arm down, takes him to the ground. I hate like the snatch and trap. I don't know why I label it snap. He tra- he traps the arms down. He he chops them the whole life f- trying to get fancy with your, your with your words snatch and trap like stupid snatch and trap. Um, help Greg, uh, Greg a little horrible. <laughs> Is it, did I look up seventy four? So okay, so now it's been 70, 75, 74. Did I say a different number before? And was it seventy? Okay, so seventy is right guard now. Yeah, they had some injuries on their on their O line. I think it's it's a little who we're not going to get into his his block right here, but it's not good. Obviously, slides to his or shuffles to his right his left in his gap protection lands his right uh, right hand. Um, the, the hand check right there while evaluating, uh, while evaluating the outside. Again, good job overall. That guy's accounted for at the inside. Okay, is my left tackle getting beat? Yes, he is. Runs, drops his shoulder, and saves Allen. Good, good job, active eyes, hand check right here, um, helping his center out and then evaluating and, and seeing that this guy is just beat. Last play is a funny one, I believe. Um, of this review and it's just to show how bad his left tackles were um and i like i said sorry if little's not 74 i don't think any panda fans are watching or care right now anyway um but like a ricochet block inside drops his shoulder into 90 because it's a it's, it's a play action so they're trying to make it look like a more of a run play be a little more aggressive drops his shoulder into the guy what does his eyes do Eyes see that the left tackle is most likely going to get beat because he throws his hands high while trying to get into his into his anchor. He sees that he's going to get beat, and he gets seventy four gets thrown inside, and it's, his hips are locked. He's not. This is not an ideal position. Um, and Van Roten sees it. Literally is trying to get to the block and has to push his own guy to the ground and almost gets a hand on, but he gets the guy gets sacked. So this is not Van Roden's fault, but kind of funny to see how his left tackles, <laughs> he's not good right there. His, his feet are very, very high and low and not a good stance and base too wide and hands high and not a good timing with a punch, just not good overall. And he loses to truck his own guy over to try to get the block. But he, you know, obviously he, uh, the guy get, picks up the sack. So um, that is it. Um, again, Pickums, th- that whole thing I didn't mention that in the beginning. I'll I'll make sure to do that in the next show. Um, the Pickum thing definitely want people to uh, let me know about that. Actually, I'm gonna give out my email at the end of the show. Here, I'm gonna give out my, my email now and continue to give it out. If you're interested in that, just just like, and I know it's like you might be going going a little bit out of your way to do this, but just so I have a feeling like if I should do it or not, um, either tweet me jrb31, um, like send me a DM, like you don't have to put it out there, or just e- email me. It's um, it's Joe period blew it so joe common spelling j-o-e period blew it b-l-e-w-e-t-t at jets j-e-t-s x factor.com joe blew it period blew it at jets x factor.com no spaces email me if you're interested in that if i get at least like three four five people i'll do it if not i'm not i'm not going to but i think that'd be pretty cool um so we have van roten done uh, a new source coming next um show um and then we're doing cager and i'm gonna then wilson gore i'm gonna try my absolute best to get those guys out if i don't i don't i don't think people will kill me if i don't um but i again i want to do those four shows at the minimum and then the show where i'm wrapping up or not wrapping up i'm doing the 53 man roster protection plus call in plus like live chat on youtube show so stay tuned for that i will see you guys um very very soon